This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Are you ready for some high adventure? Coming up next on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. 1910 and the new west is dawning, bringing a future of telephones, cars, and new ways of doing. But there still rides a man of the old west, a lawman out to serve justice to those who need its help and to those who deserve its sharp sword. That lawman is Richard Wade, U.S. Marshal. This time, it's Case for the Past, written for radio by Barry M. Putt, Jr., How you doing over there, boy? It's been a long day. We'll go the rest of the way home in the morning. Is there somebody there? Hello? (laughs) Show yourself. Richard Wade. How do you know my name? You're the only one who can help. With what? You have to get Walt Williams out of prison. He was convicted of murder. Because of your faulty testimony. I saw him shoot Horace Aldo. His friends know the truth. They're mistaken. He's scheduled to be hanged at the end of the week. You have until then to get his sentence overturned. And if I don't? You and everyone you know will pay the price. Look carefully at what I dropped. What is it? Hey, where'd you go? (laughs) Boy, let's see what he left. A finger? This is serious. Sorry, old boy. We need to head home now. Here's some waffles and blueberries to take home. Thank you, Billy. The extra food you give me has really kept me going. I'd do anything for a wonderful woman like you. Hello, Angela. That will be 80 cents more. I can't afford that. I saw a large delivery being made to the general store last week, and another yesterday. So? Business can't be too bad if you're getting that amount of inventory regularly. You are welcome to eat here as long as you pay. Fine. Angela, I'm sorry. I'll stop over soon. I told you not to give her any more free food, Billy. Can't you see she's using you? That's not true. We like each other. Getting in the way. You need to stop. Billy. Marshall, are you just returning from your trip? Yeah. I'm glad you're back. Maybe we can have dessert some evening. Maybe. Whoa there! Emily! Help! Hold out your hand. All all right. Jump on behind me. (laughs) Thank you, Marshall. (laughs) That could have been me. You should always double check your hitch. I did, Angela. I don't know how it came loose. I'm sorry things are so tough that you decided to leave town. What do you mean? It looked like all your furniture was in the buckboard. When I returned from doing errands, I found my belongings outside the saloon. Why? Stacy from the bank put them there. You can't expect to live somewhere for free. I don't. The bank repossessed the saloon because the owner didn't pay his mortgage. The building was closed without any warning. Where's the owner now? He left town. I found a new room to rent, and I was in the process of bringing my things over there. I'm glad you found a place so fast. Me too. Have to go, Marshall. I look forward to seeing you again soon. All right. Goodbye. 
What happened here? I hit a pothole and lost control of my buckboard. The council should do something about the roads. We handle civic matters. Surely something can be done. Our hands are tied. I hope to see you at the meeting. I'll attend as soon as I can. Well, good. Have a nice day. It's too bad they can't do anything. Once I wrangle your horses, I'll check into the matter. Thank you, Marshal. I'm glad you were able to help Miss Emily, sir. So was I. Family and friends are important. My niece's death helped me to see that. I need to find a way to connect with them more. I know what you mean. I've missed out myself. Our work keeps us on the go. That makes it pretty difficult. There must be something we can do. If you figure out what, let me know. I will. I'll put in an order for supplies to fix the potholes around town. Good. I'll be glad to help repair them. I appreciate that, Jim. You know, I'm not so sure Emily's accident was really an accident. What makes you say that? The man that approached me last night warned me that people in my life would get hurt. You think he was behind it? It's possible. If he was, that means he must be watching us. We'll need to keep an eye out. All right. Why did he give you that finger? I'm not sure. It might be a clue. Has the newspaper come yet? Here it is. Thank you. Maybe the obituaries can help. Let's see. A man named Alan Weber died three days ago in Loveland. Victor Coulomb and Frank White died recently in Burtoud. How does that help us, sir? If one of them lost a finger, it might mean that there's a connection between their death and Horace Alto's murder. I see. Mr. Alto was killed in Burtoud. Let's start at the courthouse there. Thank you, sir. We'll let you know when we're done. There sure is a lot of evidence on the Alzo case. Certainly is. What are those? Witness statements. Hmm. This one from Williams is interesting. Here's some of his clothes. Uh, What else is in here? Huh. An envelope. What's it say on the outside? Retrieved from Horace Alzo's body. A crushed bullet. It must be the one that killed him. Look at the marks on the side. I've never seen anything like that. Me either. If memory serves, a Colt single-action army revolver was used in the crime. You don't see many of those anymore. No. Well, there isn't much else in here. Well, it's noon. Alan Weber's funeral is in half an hour. We've got just enough time to get there. If nothing turns up, we'll head to Loveland. All right, sir. Mr. Weber's funeral, sir, was a dead end. Yeah, but we can check it off our list. That brings us one step closer to getting to the bottom of things. Well, that's true. Huh. What is it? Let's pull into the woods. I think we're in far enough. Do you hear that? No. Who was that? I don't know. I felt something wasn't right when we left Bert out. He must have been following us. Do you think he's the one that gave you that finger? I didn't get a close enough look at him to tell. Let's follow him. I don't see the man that was following us anywhere. He can't be too far ahead. Look at all the carriages coming around the corner there, and the people walking alongside him. It's a funeral procession. There isn't a person at Mr. Coulomb's factory that didn't like him. He was such a good employer. His death is such a tragedy. Marshal, you owned a factory. Yep. Let's find it and talk to some of the workers. Thank you for speaking with us, sir. My pleasure, Marshal. Would you like some tea? No, thank you, ma'am. What can you tell us about Mr. Coulomb's death? It was unexpected. Do you know how it happened? Several of us had dinner at Samson's restaurant the night he died. Is that where it occurred? No. Victor walked home alone afterwards. Someone attacked him then. I see. There's something I'd like to show you. Is that a picture of him? Yes. 
And the ring he's wearing, it went missing that night. What kind of stones are in it? Rubies. They were his favorite. I can see why. I I can't believe someone would cut his finger off for it. That's awful, ma'am. Are the police looking for the ring? Yes, but they haven't been able to find it. We appreciate you talking with us. We'll do all we can to get to the bottom of this. Thank you. Jim, we know now that it was Mr. Coulomb's finger that was given to me. Yes, but why? I'm not sure. Let's go to the restaurant then. What can I get for you, Marshal? Deputy? We'd like to talk to someone that was here the night Victor Kulum was murdered. I was. Did you know him? Briefly. He had been here once before. Did anything stand out about that evening? Not that I can think of. There was a couple of men at the bar I'd never seen before. What did they look like? They were kind of scruffy. One had a hat pulled down over his eyes. He called the other man Turnbull. Was the first man's name mentioned? Turnbull called him Duran or Duran, something like that. The name Duran sounds familiar. Could it be that? Maybe. I don't remember. How long were they here? No more than ten minutes. They left soon after Mr. Coulomb and his friends did. Have they been in since? I haven't seen them. Thank you. Sure. Jim... Duran must be the one I saw in the woods that night. Why do you say that? He wore his hat the same way the bartender described. Why would he come here and talk to Turnbull? I don't know. Something's definitely going on between them. What? That's what we need to find out. Let's try to track down Mr. Coulomb's ring. Good day. Has any jewelry been pawned here recently? (laughs) All the time. What you looking for? Rubies. I don't see many of them. All right, thank you. Oh, but, but, we got some the other day. Can we see them? Just a moment. I can't believe it, Marshal. We look all over town and finally have luck in this hole in the wall. Things are looking up. Oh, Oh, sorry. They must have been sold when I was out. Do you have paperwork? Usually. But the folder it was in is empty. Is there anything about the person that pawned him that you can remember? Well, he was the quiet type. Mumbled something about a club downtown. Really? Thank you. Come on, Jim. Let's go. You can't believe no one in this part of town knows about the club. Maybe that pawn dealer was wrong. It's possible. It isn't down this street either. What do you want to do? Let's head back. Hey, see that man who just put on his hat? Where? Two blocks up on the other side of the street. Oh, yeah. I think that's Duran. Where's he going? Let's find out. Hurry, Jim. I'm trying, sir. Huh. Wasn't he in this area? I, I thought so. The building is all boarded up. What are you doing? Uh, trying to get one of the boards off so I can see what's behind it. No need, Marshal. They slide downward. Oh, yeah. Can you see what's in there? A metal door. It's open. Let's see what's inside. This is some place. Sure are a lot of people. Do you see them? Um, No. There, at the blackjack table. Yeah. His face sure looks familiar. Is that your bet, Mr. Turnbull? Yes, it is. Turnbull? He's the man at the roulette wheel. Right. Hey, where did Duran go? I don't know. Turnbull just lost. He's putting down another bet. Let's move closer. What's that he's gambling with? It looks like rubies. Let it ride, son. You sure? That's the most you've bet yet. Spin it. I need a thrill. All right. Besides, they ain't mine. I pawned them for some cash and stole them back. (laughs) Come on, 17. Come on. (laughs) 23. Ah, that's just too bad. (laughs) Want to play again? Ah, that cleaned me out. Another time, son. He's leaving. Come on. Where'd he go? I don't see him anywhere. 
Whoa, that was close. Where's it coming from? It's hard to tell. Y'all want to live, you keep your distance. Where are you? He's gone. How could he vanish in the middle of all that? I don't know. With him and Duran disappearing so suddenly, they must be a couple of Houdinis. Yeah, why are they running? Good question. We need more information. Let's get to a telephone. Thank you for letting me use the phone, Captain. It's yours as long as you need. I'll be out front. Okay. Operator, connect me with Emily Hobart in Lyons. Hello? I'm looking for Miss Hobart. Is everything okay? Yeah. Her new building has a party line. Someone's getting her. Marshall, how are you? Good. Are you settled in? I am. Thank you for asking. Glad to hear it. Could you look through the books you have on Colorado and see if there's any mention of the Duran or Turnbull families? Sure. Hold on. I hope we can get to the bottom of this soon, Jim. So do I, sir. It certainly isn't an easy case. One of the toughest yet. Marshall? Yes? I have a book on the history of Lumberton Textiles. They had a factory in Berthoud. The caption below a photo of employees includes both of the names that you mentioned. Really? Does it have any other information on them? No. All right. Thank you. Certainly. Have a good day. You too. Goodbye. What did she find out? Members of Turnbull and Duran's family worked for a textile company in Berthoud. Do you think they're still there? I doubt it. The company went bankrupt during the last recession. Not long after that, Mr. Alzo was killed there. Really? Duran and Turnbull might know something about his death. Why would they hide it? I'm not sure. It's worth checking out the area where Mr. Alzo got killed. Maybe there's something there. Besides these trees here, this place is barren. Yeah, stay here. I want to walk down to where I was when I saw Mr. Alzo get shot. Yes, sir. Move away from the tree. How's this? No, closer to me. Is this good? Yeah. My initial assessment was right. Even though it was foggy on the day the murder occurred, I would have been able to see William standing there as clearly as I see you now. That means he had to have killed Mr. Alza. At least coming here confirmed it. It certainly did. Hmm, that's something. What? You can still see the bullet holes in the tree. Oh, yeah. Most of them look like they were shot from the right. That means they had to be fired from further away. Could you stand here? Sure. I'm going down the hill again. Incredible. I can't see you now. What does that mean? Since I wasn't able to see you just now... Right. Mr. Alzo must have been shot from the second position you stood in. Which means Williams couldn't have shot him. Really? It was so foggy that Williams may not have seen who did it. Why didn't he say something? He mentioned it in the statement I read at the courthouse, but nobody believed him. Do you think Duran or Turnbull shot Mr. Aldzo? It's possible. Let's check out the bullet holes on the right side of the tree again. What's that? Where, sir? Oh, it's in there real deep. A bullet. It's similar to the one at the courthouse that killed Mr. Aldzo. See the marks on the side? Yeah. This proves it. Williams is innocent. But who killed him? Somebody there? I'm Alec Duran. Mr. Duran. Uh, Alec is fine. All right. I remember you now. You came to see me before the trial and insisted Williams was innocent. That's right. You wouldn't listen. I've been trying to find a way to convince you ever since. Why were you talking with Turnbull at the restaurant that night? I was trying to get him to confess to killing Mr. Alzo, but he wouldn't. He pushed me aside and followed Mr. Coulomb. A few hours later, I found Coulomb on the ground. His finger had been severed. Why did you take it? To entice you to look into the case again, so you would see that Williams is innocent. What does it matter to you? Uh, he's my stepfather. Really? Yes. I didn't want him to be executed for a crime he didn't commit. 
I even went to Turnbull's home and to a gambling parlor to try to talk to him. But he had someone tell me to leave or I'd have trouble. I see. What happened to the heel of your boot? Hmm. Uh, looks, looks like a bullet. It must have got lodged in there during that shootout I dodged after leaving the gambling parlor. It was between Turnbull and us. The bullet has the same marks as the one in the tree. That means... Turnbull must have killed Mr. Alzo. <sighs> I'm glad the truth is finally coming out. Yeah. So are we. Please, talk to the prosecutor today. My stepfather is scheduled to be hanged tomorrow. Of course. Jim, go see him while I have Alec bring me to Turnbull's place so I can arrest him. All right. We'll meet up later. Yes, sir. We've been walking a while, Alec. Are you sure this is the way? Positive. He lives deep in the woods. All right. We'll go a little further. There. See? Where? That shack up ahead. That's where he lives? Yes. Sure is run down. There's a Colt single action revolver on his porch. Yeah. Stay here while I move in. Uh, okay. Hold it. Both of you. Drop your guns. What are you doing here? I want to talk to Turnbull. You will. Move! Uh, uh, get these ropes off of me. How did you all find me? My friend here. I warned you all to keep away, Duran. Not when my stepfather's life is in jeopardy. Where's that deputy? On his way to the prosecutor's office. He has enough information to clear Williams and get you charged. What you all talking about? The bullets match. Bullets? They're in my pocket. You go get them, Smith. Here you go. Do you use that gun on your porch? Sure do for talking practice and hunting. Nobody touches it but me. Compare that bullet to the one from your gun. You'll see. They have the same markings. Y'all mean those lines on the side there? That's right. One came from the tree where Mr. Alzo was murdered. The other from Mr. Duran's boot when you shot at him. The bullet that killed Mr. Alzo is in evidence at the courthouse. It has the same markings. If they find the one that killed Victor Coulomb, I'll bet it has those marks on it too. Cap, you still collecting those bullets from my target practice? Sure. Got a few here in my pocket. See the markings? Yeah, any gun could make them. A spent bullet is like a fingerprint. It can only come from one specific gun. Those marks prove you shot those bullets. And that my stepfather is taking the blame for a crime you committed. <laughs> Ain't my problem. Why did you do it? Money. Alza wouldn't pay his gambling debts. When I saw Coolum's ring, I knew I had to have it. Why? To gamble with. Of course. It was expensive. It gave me a good run at the roulette wheel. You killed someone so you could gamble away their money? Yeah. So what? That's reprehensible. Cap, Smith, get them on their feet. All right, you. Stand up. No. Uh, uh. Stand up. Are the marshal's hands tied tight? Yeah. Put him in the old barrel. Get off of me. Put him in there, too. No. Okay. Put the lid on. Stop! Make sure it's on tight. It is. All right, pick it up and follow me. Toss it in. So long, Marshal. Take the horses and go after the deputy. I want him found before he gets the authorities. Sure. Got my hands free. Alec? Alec! He 
busy now. Are you all right? I think so. I don't see him anywhere. Let's get to the main road and find help. What took you all so long? Let me go. He's been fighting us all the way. Why does he still have his guns on him? Sorry about that. Ah, you idiot. Who are you? Turnbull. You work with the marshal, don't you? Speak up. Yeah. So y'all know what I did? Yes. Cap, take him over to that tree. Uh, all right. Uh, Smith, you start digging. Where is the marshal? Oh, he's at the bottom of the river. What? Can't you dig faster, Smith? Uh, I'm doing the best that I can. Cap, get in there and help. I want this done already. Okay. How deep do you want it? I'll let you all know when to stop. Uh, all right. Get these ropes off of me. They won't matter soon. Dig faster, you two. How's that? Keep going. A little deeper. That's good. You come out of there so you can put him down there. Uh, uh, where is he? What? What? He got away? Well, let's go find him. I think we're far enough away that they won't be able to catch us. Good. I hope we can find someone on this road that'll help. What's that? Jim? Is that you? Yes. What are you doing here? Turnbull's men caught me before I got to the prosecutor's office. They were going to bury me alive. Luckily, I escaped. I'm glad you did. And glad you still have your guns, too. Here, take one, Marshal. Thank you. If we stay off the roads, they won't find us. I'm sure you're right, Jim. But I have a slightly different plan. What? Alec, could you wait here while we hide in the bushes? But why? We need bait. What? Don't worry. We'll protect you. Uh, all right. Thank you. Come on, Jim. You! How did you get out of that barrel? What are you talking about? Hold it right there. Where did you all come from? You stop pulling me off my horse. Ah! Jim, Alec, get the other two. <laughs> Grab his gun, Jim. Got it. Up against the horses, you three. <laughs> you all idiots. Thanks for helping us, Alec. Sure. Deputy? Let's cuff them and head them back to town. Yes, sir. Billy, we cannot go on like this. There's nothing more to say, Ma. She's... Enough! I'm going over to help the marshal and deputy fix the roads. Angela, how are you? Some friend you turned out to be. I'm sorry. I gave you all I could. Yeah, right. Angela? Leave me alone. She... Really? Aw, oh, son. I guess you were right about her, Ma. I'm sorry. I only want the best for you. Thank you. I'll be back before dinner. All right. Billy? Marshall, I was just on my way to see you. Glad we caught you. I thought we'd start in front of the cafe. Oh, that's nice of you. What can I do? Why don't you clear out the potholes? Jim will fill them in with gravel and I'll top them off with dirt. Okay. Are you all done with the case you were working on? We sure are. We got an innocent man exonerated this morning and put the real culprit and his men in jail, awaiting trial. I'm glad to hear it. So am I, Marshal. Hello, Emily. I have some news of my own. What is it? 
luck was on my side this week. I got a good deal on the saloon at the bank's auction. That's wonderful. What do you plan to do with it? There's a lot of antiques in it. I thought I'd turn it into a shop and sell them along with my collection of books. My hope is to create an environment that brings people together. It sounds like a great idea. Thank you. It looks like you're doing some important work here. We're just getting started. I'll leave you to it then. It was nice to see you. You too. Have a good day. All right. Let's fix these potholes and help put this town back together again. Yes, sir. This was Richard Wade, U.S. Marshal, written by Barry M. Putt Jr. Starring Reed Thompson as Marshal Richard Wade, Bob Helling as Deputy Jim Clayton, Kelly Biston as Emily Hobart. Also in the cast were Philip Colocatronas as Alex Duran, Joseph McGuire as Turnbull, Roberto Castaneda as Cap, Paul Arbisi as Smith, Beth Greaterex as Angela DeMonico, Roy Nessel as Billy Armstrong, Claudia Cimini as Connie Armstrong, Roy Nessel as Bartender, William Mask as Pawn Shop Worker, Tristan Johnson as Victor's Secretary, Jim Glam as Lewis, other parts played by Jason Markiewicz, Brian Grote, and members of the cast. I'm your announcer, Ryan Barker. Sound design and dialogue editing, Jay Charles. Produced and directed by Joseph C. McGuire. This episode was recorded on Clean Feed, with financial support from Gregory Sweet, members of the RTP Repertory Company, and Soundlake, the sound effects platform. You can find this and other series at podcastplayhouse.org or wherever you get podcasts. Go to the website and donate today to help support this and other programs. This is a Radio Theater Project presentation.